What time is it, everybody? It is time for Bodge Week. Welcome, bienvenido, Christo y Salam. Welcome to the channel, y'all. Today, we are going to be talking something techy, something gadgety, and something that absolutely and completely passed me by. I never owned one. I never used one until very, very recently when I kind of thought, oh, this is something I'd like to look into because it's something that completely passed me by. And, obviously, from the title, it is this. This is a mini disc recorder and player. It is made by Sharp. It's the MD Portable Recorder MD MT88. Taking a quick look at the little device itself. It's got a metal case, front and back. The battery compartment looks like it's been stuck on. It reminds me of new cars that have those smart pads, sort of like, they look like they're stuck to the dashboard. They just look really odd. I mean, there are cars out there like Tesla, which have them kind of, um, you know, molded into the car. But that's what this looks like. It's like, oh gosh, we forgot about the power. Quick, stick it on. And that's what they've done. They've just stuck it on the back. Although that metal does go around here. Anyway, that's enough. Here we have portable mini disc recorder, Grabador Reproductor Mini Disc Portail, DC 12 volts, 1.5 volts, nickel metal hydride battery. Now, there were two of these made there was the MD MT 88 and 89. The 89, I believe, came with a rechargeable battery. Um, and there was a slight difference to the front of it, apparently. But I, that's about as much as I know. These were introduced in 2001. So I can't really tell the date on this because etched into it, there's the serial number. Etched into it is A, G, O, Q, 28, 10, 11. So I can't tell whether this was etched in i think that might be the initials of somebody and then i think that is possibly the 28th to the 10th 2011 but these came out in 2001 i don't really know what that means that is just um not very clear at all so we have here we have the dc in five volts we also have the mic in and we have the optical and line in as well on this side. Four little, sorry, three screws to hold that in. On the front, we have the port for the headphones and the remote control. The open button, a couple more screws. A couple more screws there, nothing much on that side to report. And then we have the battery pack. We've had a look at the underneath. That's the open button. On top here, we have digital recording mdlp so this will convert uh you have a normal play a long play and then a super long play obviously it's going to affect then the quality of the recording on it bass display mode edit play and pause off and hold enter and sync volume control fast forward and rewind so with this machine, you can actually record uh, directly onto it using the, uh, where did I see it? Uh, using the line in. You've also got a microphone, like I said there. Um, so I'd never used any mini disc before. They completely and utterly passed me by. The first time I ever remember seeing any kind of mini disc device was in 2001. And um, it was interesting, but I was just like, oh, it looks like a CD single. And I, I don't know, I just carried on using CDs and then I moved on then to um, MP3, MP files on, the, on my uh, old lap, on my old PC. And then a couple of years later, then I bought a iPod Shuffle when they first came out. The first generation iPod Shuffle, which I still have actually. I must do a video on that. So mini discs completely and utterly pass me by. There are many videos explaining the history of mini disc, 
and the default, uh, the, sorry, the fall of Minidisc. And it just, I never really interested me, to be honest. It just completely passed me by. So I recently got hold of a couple of players. So this is the first one that I'm going to show to you. First of all, I haven't done anything to it apart from learn how to use it because this was brand new to me and it took a little while to get used to the functionality on it and what it can do and what it can't do. So the first thing I need to do is to give it a little bit of a clean because it's a bit smudgy, it's a bit dirty and let's just see if we can make it just a teeny weeny bit cleaner. So that has definitely made a difference to it. It does look a lot cleaner and shinier. Unfortunately, there are still a lot of scratches on it. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. So let's dive right in. First of all, here we have the battery compartment. Slide it up, slide it down. And it just fits one AA battery. So I've got a nice, powerful AA battery in here. Push it in slide it down i bought this on ebay i paid about 25 pound for it it was for the device only there were no headphones no attachments no box no nothing at all it was literally just this as it came so i was like mm, i'm not really sure if it's going to be working or not the, although, although the listing did say it was working so if i just open up here we have it doesn't really open up that much for you to see much inside unfortunately so after using this again it and then using it it all works absolutely perfectly so what i had to do then was to buy some discs so i bought a pack of these mini discs so the 74 minute um discs but with this machine you can um, have it on uh, you can extend them but like I said you reduce quality I then bought some of these TDK discs as well so there was the three which is where this one comes from then I bought a batch of other ones so we got Foo Fighters these are just recorded on Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, Cypress Hill I think there's kind of a hint here uh, chili peppers by the way nothing written on that one Brig brothers av flow and i ended up then by it a really nice one which is macy gray i love the album there weren't many of these uh actually available and they the ones that are extremely expensive this was the cheapest one and it was 30 pounds so some of them were commanding prices of a hundred pounds and more for some of these mini discs so this was a, a bargain so mini discs aside i always feel like i should put it in this way but you don't you put it in there there's an arrow there slide it in push it in and it holds and then pull it the lid closed it comes on and says hello does a bit of a talk read so there are 41 tracks on there. It doesn't have a name, but there are 41 tracks in there and it told you how uh, long it was. I then press play. And it'll start playing. You can then skip. You can change the mode. So you can have it on random. Random repeat. Song repeat. Oh, no, sorry, album repeat, this is song, re and then that's one song repeat and off. You can have the display, so it tells you how far you're long into the track. There's also an indicator there of the sound level. And then you've got the bass, bass off, one, two, three, and bass off. I always have it on number two. And here you have the edits. Now, editing it means that you can delete certain tracks. So if you are flicking through and you want track number nine and you think, oh, no, I don't like track number nine, you can actually edit it and just delete that one track. It is so good. So what I wanted to do was to obviously put some music on there. So if I press 
pause and then I can press off goodbye open it up take out the disk so if I go to my proper Macy Gray disk take it out pop that in Uh, it comes on. Hello. 25 tracks. That will give you, obviously, that gives you all the track information and everything. So you have all the songs. Very, very fast to change. You can also then hold the button down then to skip through the track if you wish. It's very, very quiet, the mechanism is. You can just hear a little whizzing of the laser tray moving along to the next song. Then we have the pause button. Ten songs, 45 minutes, Macy Gray. Goodbye, turn it off. So, I am so lucky that this works absolutely perfectly. So the next thing I had to do was to find music that I could play without getting a copyright strike or anything. So I thought, right, I'm going to record some music onto this disc from the YouTube library and songs that I actually have in many of my videos. So what I had to do was to transfer the music onto these. So what I did, for example, was create a two song track. So there's two songs in here that I created uh, like a kind of video for. So this track is th three minutes and 44 seconds. There are two tracks in there. So what I wanna do is to transfer the song, the music onto the player. So let's take one of these. So here we have a brand new blank mini disc. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's pop it in here and then see what happens. So it's telling me that there is no music on there. It's blank. All right. So it's a blank disc. There you are. See, it comes up blank MD. So now I need to connect uh, sound into it. So I'm going to use the optical or line in. Unfortunately, I only have one of these, which makes it quite difficult. So I've had to disconnect my microphone that I use it for. I have cable here, one end into the phone. The other end, well, first of all, I need to check to see if it's working. I'm going to use my little JBL on line in. Okay, so let's see if it works. Okay, so that's fine, that's working. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to put the song back to the beginning. Unplug it, turn it off. Uh, I'm going to turn the volume up on the phone to max because that gives the best output and then put it into now which one did I do it before was it mic in I think it was mic in mic okay um, let's turn it on all right, so it's talk reading. Okay, so it just goes automatically to um, to um, to blank MD. Okay, so what I want to do if I want to record, if I press the record button there. Okay, so it gets everything all set up and ready. Track one is flashing, doesn't start it you can then change it so actually if i put it on display so that gives you the total amount let's go back to the beginning so lp2 
Long play two will give you 149 minutes and 58 seconds. Long play four will give you 299 minutes and 57 seconds. You can then record in mono. And then you can all then record in normal. So that is the normal speed. So literally it is all ready to start recording. So I move to the phone. It's on pause. So if I press that button and then press play on the phone, it is now playing. I can see there it's a bit too high. So let me turn the volume down going in. So we'll just leave these two tracks play uh, to record on there. And what you'll find is that when the first track finishes and there's a pause, it'll automatically track it onto track number two. Okay, so unfortunately it didn't do it because I might have put the tracks too close together. I don't know, but it didn't do it. It's just recording as one. So then I press pause. Now it's doing a talk edit, which means it's kind of like finalizing the disc. And I've turned it off. So if I turn it back on. Hello. One track on there. Let's plug it into the speaker again. And I press play. Plug it into headphones. Turn the volume down. And there we go. It is recorded onto it. Now I'll have to fast forward it. That one seemed to record fine. But then it goes straight on to the next one, and that sounds blooming awful, so I think the levels were way too high. <sighs> because that's quite bassy. Stop! There we go. Whoosh. Way too loud. So there we go. But I've already done this, and I've done it professionally, so if I press... Uh, Remove the disc. Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so I got 41 tracks on there. I used the full tape on long play two. Let's press play. Turn the volume up. All right, so I can't play any more than that. That isn't the YouTube mix. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, that's because I haven't done it yet, which is what we're going to do. So let's do a proper recording. So let me go back to the um, other disc. Let me erase that disc. Okay, so I've re-erased that disc. That's how quick it was. And what I'm going to do now is to copy like the music that I said I have on the phone, all the YouTube stuff. Let me copy it onto this blank tape. I'll come back to you when I've done that. Just before I do go ahead, I'm going to use the um, line-in 
rather than the mic in. That was much better when I used it on that last time. So I'm going to change it to the optical or line in and then transfer the music onto that that way. Okay, so it is actually recording the tracks. I've put it on the highest quality one. So we only had like the 74 minutes. And so this song is just, God, that needs a clean. It's just tugging along. So we're just gonna leave it. So I do apologize for the sound difference because now I'm using a different phone because I'm using the main one to do this recording. We're coming down to the last few seconds of it. We've got 19 tracks on there that have been recorded and we will see what happens once it has finished. It's going to finish halfway through a song, of course. And boom. It is now stopped. It is now telling me it's got 19 tracks on there. If we press play. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. That is now finalizing the disc. And it's done so let's get the speaker set up and listen okay so I've decided to use my Bose uh, sound link with this just for better quality let's plug it in let's turn that on let's get the device hang on let me just sort out that flickering there we go let's press play Hello. 19 tracks on there. Let's press play. Oh, would help if I put it into sound out. There we go back to the beginning let's go to track number one Track number two. Oh, that sounds so good.
picking songs at random there. I am so impressed with this. It just sounds so good. You, you can't really um, appreciate the sound. it there so there we go that is how i effortlessly transfer songs onto this sharp md portable recorder it does take a little bit of getting used to because i've never used one of these before so get into grips with the on how to use it i've downloaded the manual but again it's it's use that um, sort of like makes you get used to it but i really really do like it if I was switching over from cassettes to mini discs or CDs, I would definitely have been happy with um, with this. It's a really, really nice machine. It's nice and compact. The battery compartment, like I said, is a bit of a meh. But I guess there are better ones out there. Probably, yes, professional ones that I've seen. But for everyday users, just for me, traveling around, using my little mini disc, I really do like it. So I think we should take a look and see. Let me take the top off this. Let me get the bits and bobs and we'll just have a look and see at the inside of it. So before I start taking this apart, I'm going to remove the disc and I'm going to remove the battery. All right, let me find the correct So these screws are absolutely tiny. So I'm going to put them down in here as I take them off in case there are any differences. Okay, so now we got those screws off. Let's see. So this all comes off in one piece. And there is a little ribbon cable there holding it in. There we can see the mini disc readers. Okay, so it's not going to play because it still detects the the as if the case is open, and I don't know which buttons to push to override it. And I'm to be honest, I really don't want to. But as you can see, that is just so tiny little components. Let's take the disc out. Okay, let's take out the mini disc. Let's close it back down. Let's get those little screws back in. Right, let's see if I got it all back together. Yes, put the disc in. Yep, it's coming on, so that's good. I didn't break it completely. Yay! Bodge, bodge alert, bodge alert. Right, let's turn that off. Goodbye, there we go. So there we go, guys. That is just my first look at this little machine. The Sharp Mini MD Portable Recorder MDMT88. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. Just this little look has been fascinating for me because, like I said before, this technology completely bypassed me and I went straight from CDs to uh, MP3s and MP4s. 
So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more videos. Share the videos because they do help me a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, y'all.